Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa directed the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism to intensify inspections and review licenses for workshops, garages and laboratories located near residential areas to ensure safety and avoid risks or accidents. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of following security and safety measures in all industrial establishments in order to maintain the safety of workers in these facilities and that of citizens and residents in the areas close to them. This came within the framework of His Royal Highness's concern to solve issues related to citizens' needs and problems in order to maintain society's security and stability. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 21 of 2020 regulating shared financial services at the Ministry of Finance and National Economy. The edict sets the regulatory framework for shared financial services including secondment procedures, processing payroll and benefits disbursements as well as disciplinary procedures. This edict is pursuant to what was stipulated in Decree 1 of 2019 with respect to restructuring the Ministry of Finance and national economy. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the launch of King Hamad Youth Empowerment Award to achieve sustainable development goals on its third edition aims to continue Bahrain's efforts to support the international community to celebrate youth around the world. His Highness said that continuing the King Hamad Award this year despite the coronavirus pandemic reflects Bahrain's commitment to global youth and the Kingdom's support for the efforts of the United Nations in order to provide the youth with full opportunity to implement sustainable development goals. He added that the projects that will be presented in this edition for various categories have been linked between achieving the sustainable development goals and the means to combat the coronavirus pandemic and overcome its effects as a prerequisite for the award which gives their award flexibility and further broadens the scope of its interest. His Highness added that the award came to urge the international community, government and private bodies as well as the civil and youth sectors to exert further efforts within the framework of competitiveness in order to achieve international goals. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, underlined the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the youth to help push them forward into making more achievements. He also underlined the support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and their keenness on integrating the youth into the government through numerous national initiatives. His Highness congratulated the youth on the occasion of the International Youth Day held under the theme Youth Engagement for Global Action, as designated by the United Nations. His Highness underscored the importance, important role of the youth in further advancing their societies. He called on the Bahraini youth to continue to de the development march of the kingdom through hard work and creative initiatives. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, praised the decision of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince regarding regulating financial services at the ministry. He pointed out that this decision will contribute to enhance the government's expenditure, develop financial procedures, reduce operational expenses, and ensure the optimal use of financial resources, all based on unified financial procedures. The minister affirmed that the initiative adopted by the government to implement the fiscal balance program aims to achieve financial stability, sustainability, preserving financial resources, prioritizing the reduction of expenses and increasing revenue. He praised the role of the employees of governmental financial bodies in implementing the program and its strategies and affirmed the importance of exerting more efforts to achieve further accomplishments. The Ministry of Health announced the opening of registration of volunteers for the third clinical trials of the inactive COVID-19 vaccine under the World Health Organization through the national volunteering platform starting today. The Ministry stated that volunteering will be open to 6,000 individuals over the age of 18. Those who wish to volunteer should visit www.volunteer.gov.bh. A medical team will follow up on the applicant to organize the health checkup process prior to participation and according to certain health conditions. The vaccine is being prepared according to the standards of the regulations of the WHO. The third phase of the clinical trials come after the success of the first two phases in China with no side effects. The clinical trial in the kingdom is parallel to the one of the UAE. The third phase has been approved by the National Health Regulatory Authority and will focus on effectiveness of the vaccine. 
Random testing will be conducted to an active vaccine, which will stimulate the body to create antibodies of the virus, and the follow-up will be over a period of 12 months. The vaccine is being produced in partnership with the WHO-approved Chinese Sinopharm company. The National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus held a press conference with Tim Keen to highlight the measures taken to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. The Undersecretary at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Walid Al-Mana, affirmed that the Kingdom continues to exert more efforts to combat the virus, adding that there are joint Gulf, regional and international efforts to deal with the virus, particularly in the field of research and information exchange. He stated that the Kingdom is participating in the clinical trials of the inactivated virus vaccine in cooperation with the UAE through the company G42 based in Abu Dhabi. G42 is partnering with China National Biotech Group under the Chinese pharmaceutical company Sinopharm, the sixth largest vaccine producer in the world. He added that work is underway to resume all sectors gradually while taking into consideration specific factors to assess the situation between opening and reclosing such as the total number of negative cases among the daily tests and the number of critical cases among the active ones as well as the occupancy rate in isolation and treatment centers. Dr. Almana emphasized the importance of continuing to commit to the precautionary and preventive measures, particularly with the reopening of gyms, outdoor sports fields, and swimming pools. Infectious disease consultant and microbiologist at the BD of Hospital, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Manaf al Gahtani, said that the trial vaccine that is being tested is approved by the World Health Organization and that it is an activated form of the virus and does not induce COVID-19, but helps the body create antibodies, thus stimulating the body's immunity to resist the virus. He stated that the first two phases were conducted safely in China and that the third phase commenced July in the UAE. Dr. Al-Ghahtani called on those above the age of 18 who had not been previously infected by the virus to participate in the clinical trials. The consultant of infectious and internal diseases at Salmaniya Medical Complex, Dr. Jamila Salman, stated that the kingdom ensured the freedom of movement for all and that the ban of gatherings is aimed at ensuring the safety of the community, unlike countries that reopen all sectors and allow gatherings but have reverted to closing them because of subsequent increase in the number of cases. She called on the community to adhere to the precautionary and preventive guidelines and some sectors are being reopened gradually. Dr. Salman stated that the ministry continues to detect active cases and those in contact of active cases early through the expansion of number of scope of testing and random testing in the kingdom. She underscored that over 932,000 tests have been conducted so far. She reiterated the importance of wearing face masks at all times when outside, as well as washing hands periodically and disinfecting all surfaces used frequently. She stated that all those who show any symptoms should call 444 and follow the instructions given. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs said that the suspension of prayers in mosques and mass worship would continue until reaching the required reduction of the virus infection numbers as decided by medical authorities. The council added that people should continue to rise to the highest levels of responsibility and take the health measures seriously in order to overcome the pandemic. Bahrain International Airport continues to implement its precautionary and preventive measures through holding compulsory testing for travelers coming to Bahrain, in addition to applying home quarantine to curb the spread of the virus and ensure the safety of all. Travelers arriving to Bahrain will have to meet the conditions and requirements to ensure the safety of all against the coronavirus, including getting tested before arriving to the kingdom, wearing face masks and applying social distancing. We're now at the arrival processing unit for arriving passengers to the Kingdom of Bahrain. The process consists of five simple steps and the whole process should not take more than 15 to 20 minutes. We recommend our passengers to uh, download the Be Aware application, follow the procedures and the payment online to uh, reduce the processing time between 5 to 10 minutes. We thank everyone for their cooperation and we wish everyone a safe journey to uh, their, their final destination and to the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 3,134 with 295 recoveries, 407 registered new cases and one death. 155 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 249 are contacts of active cases and three are travel related. The deceased are a 57-year-old expatriate. The ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules, follow instructions and avoid public places when possible.